Okay, thank you, Chuck. This is my first time on your system here, so I just want to make sure. Well, I appreciate everybody taking your time to be with us uh, today. And uh, this will be a little different than your uh, normal presentation. We're going to be talking about a different um, uh, way of trading and investing. Um, I call this presentation better than bullion, how to trade gold without the risks of futures and ETFs and, and do it a lot more profitably. Um, one thing we do whenever I do seminars is we give away a free Zimbabwe banknote. This is the largest banknote ever issued in the history of the world. It's a $100 trillion uh, note, as you can see there. Um, in the year 2000, it was almost exactly the equivalent of the U.S. dollar. Four years later, uh, they were issuing $100 trillion notes that were worth three cents U.S. So what happened? Obviously, it was hyperinflation. Um, these only cost me about $10 a piece, so it's not a really valuable thing. Uh, some of the German hyperinflation notes are now worth hundreds or even thousands of dollars, so it, it could be worth some money someday. But that's not the reason I uh, give these out. I do this so that you can put it on your wall to remind yourself of what the U.S. dollar is going to look like one day if you don't uh, uh, elect a conservative in this next election. Um, so to get yours, send your mailing address and your phone number to webinars at bellsouth.net webinars at bellsouth.net, and we'll be happy to uh, mail that to you. Okay, let's get right into it. Um, my experience real briefly, I've uh, been in this in uh, environment for over 35 years. Uh, the precious metals trader, I've been a financial planner, stockbroker. I've been both a branch manager and a national vice president of a couple of different brokerage firms. I was an equities trader for a national firm. I've been an investment banker. I've managed an investment fund. And currently, I am the CEO of Golden Art LLC. Um, something I'd like you to think about, most of your traders, uh, I'm a trader as well, but I believe that every trader should also be an investor. You need to put some of your trading profits to work at something that's not going to be at risk, and uh, gold is the safest thing you can do. Um, but you want to specifically invest in the right kind of gold. Um, investor grade gold is the only asset class that has not had a losing year in over 100 years. Every other asset class you can mention has had losing years. This has not only not had a losing year, but it has returned seven times as much as bullion over the last uh, 40 years. So why is this better than bullion? Well, a couple of quick statements. No paper money in the history of the world has ever survived. What we're in right now is a, is a large experiment. For about the last 79 years, we've been experimenting with fiat currency in the United States. Um, Historically, paper monies have always failed, and there's no reason to believe that the uh, euro and the dollar and, and the uh, Swiss franc are going to break that trend. Gold and silver are going to hold their value long after these because they've been recognized as real money for thousands of years in almost every civilization. Four principles I want you to remember. Uh, cash is trash. I understand this is being recorded, so you don't have to uh, write all these down, but cash is trash. Bullion is better. Investment grade gold grows, not just in price, but in, in real value. European investment grade gold rules. Some quick definitions, cash or cash equivalents for things like paper money, your savings accounts, money markets, uh, any kind of bonds. Uh, bullion is precious metal that's been fabricated into bars, ingots, or coins. So it's not just bars. Uh, most of the bullion uh, out there today is in the form of coins, like Kruger Adams or Maple Leafs and so on. But the main distinction of this bullion is that it derives its value solely from its metal content. It doesn't have any rarity or numismatic value, and therefore it's not an investment. Uh, as you'll see later on, the real value of bullion is that for the last 3,000 years, uh, its purchasing power has not changed. So its value doesn't change. That makes it a real good hedge. But it also uh, makes it a, a bad investment because you want your investments to grow in value, not just in price. Investment grade gold has two kinds of value, unlike bullion. It has the intrinsic value, uh, like bullion does, of its metal content, but it also has the extrinsic value of rarity. Those of you that trade options, I was an options principal for many years, uh, know the, the principles of intrinsic and extrinsic value. Okay, European investment grade gold is uh, coins that are extremely undervalued in comparison with the U.S. investment grade coins. The U.S. coins have risen thousands of percent since the modernization of our grading systems here. 
but the European coin system haven't yet undergone that modernization. So we're buying European rare coins for about 10 cents on the dollar compared to equivalent uh, U.S. coins, equivalent in rarity and in condition. People say, but you know, I've been told that bullion is a great investment. Hasn't bullion gone up 500% in the last decade? Well, yes, it has. But here's what an investment is. It's putting money or capital to use to gain profitable returns as interest, income, or appreciation in value. Bullion never increases in value. Investment grade coins, coins do. There's a major, major difference between price and value. Um, here's a great example uh, about how the price to gold changes, but its value doesn't. In 1910, the average three-bedroom, two-bath house in this country cost $4,000. Wouldn't you like to buy about 10 of those today? But gold was only $20 an ounce back then, so that meant that you were paying 200 ounces of gold for a brand new, modern, three-bedroom, two-bath house at that time. Flash forward 100 years to 2010, the same 3-2 is costing about a quarter million dollars. Gold's at $1,200 an ounce, and so you're paying $200, or 200 ounces of gold for a 3-2. Now, what happened? Did that 2010 house magically sprout an Olympic-sized swimming pool and a double tennis court and horse tables? No, it's a 3-2 on an average-sized house lot. So it's no more valuable than the house of 1910, but it costs 60 times as much. Why? Well, for on one reason only, and that is that the dollar has lost so much value. It's lost uh, so much value that it takes 60 times as many dollars to buy the same amount of house. Well, what about the gold? Is the gold in 2010 somehow magically worth 60 times as much as the gold in 1910? Again, the answer is no. The only reason the gold has gone up so much is because the dollar has dropped so much. So the value of gold is for what it will buy, not how many dollar signs it's got in front of it. 200 ounces of gold bought the 3.2 in 1910, and they did the same in 2010. Here's another example. My wife's favorite car is a Mustang. 65 Mustang the first year with all the bells and whistles, all the accessories, cost about 50 ounces of gold. The same Mustang, a lot prettier looking, I think, uh, but still it's a Mustang with all the accessories, cost 50 ounces of gold. Here's labor. In the time of Jesus, uh, laborers were paid about one ounce of gold a week. They're paid in silver, but it's the equivalent. Uh, in 1776, when the U.S. was founded, uh, a stonemason uh, average wage was about $20 a week, and gold was $20 an ounce. So that was one ounce of gold that he was being paid. And today, a skilled stonemason gets paid roughly the equivalent of one ounce of gold, of what the price of gold is. So uh, cars, uh, labor, uh, housing. Uh, what about clothing? In Roman times, a Roman toga cost about uh, one ounce of gold. In the time of Shakespeare and Beethoven and Thomas Jefferson during the Great Depression, and today, uh, if you call Hart, Shafter, and Marx, you'll find the price of a, a nice suit of men's clothes is about the same as the price of gold. So basically, for 3,000 years, an ounce of gold has bought about the same amount of bread, clothing, materials, shelter, and labor. Now, when it comes to the price of gold, you need to remember something very important. Gold is money. It's not a commodity. A lot of uh, people write about gold and call it a commodity. But if you look at, if you track gold against a commodity index, you see that very often they move in, in, in diametrically opposed directions. Gold is money, and so the gold's price is dependent on how much world governments devalue or revalue their money. And you can see this quite easily. Uh, you'll see that one day gold will be up in Europe, but it'll be down in the United States. And then next week it might be the opposite. It's more to do with the uh, value of the currency. Um, the, the gold itself buys about the same uh, amount of gold and has done so for 3,000 years. So what do we learn from this? Basically, that bullion gold protects wealth, whereas investment grade gold both protects and creates wealth. So if you look at just to protect your money, bullion is fine. But if you want your money to grow, then you want investment grade gold. Um, quick little history lesson. Uh, did you realize, you know, probably most of you do, uh, that the Federal Reserve is not federal? It's, uh, it's an organization, a cabal, really, of private banks. Um, did you know that it's a central bank? I 
teach this in front of thousands of people, and and usually most people know that the Federal Reserve isn't isn't federal. Uh, a few know that it's um, a central bank in reality. Uh, very few knew that we've had a prior central bank, and I out of five thousand people, I hardly ever find anybody knows that we've had two prior central banks. We've been thoroughly brainwashed into thinking that we can't get along without the Fed, but we got along for about half of our country's existence without a Federal Reserve System or Central Bank, and we did fine. If you want to study up more on this, uh, the, the classic book on this is The Creature from Jekyll Island by Geoberg Griffin. He tells about how European bankers and some turncoat senators and congressmen got together secretly and put together the Federal Reserve System and then rammed it down the throat of Congress. Very interesting reading. Uh, Ron Paul has written a great book called In the Fed. I hope it's prophetic. And then, of course, there's that famous author, Tom Barrett, who wrote The Non-Federal Fed. If you're interested in seeing that article, uh, just send me an email and I'll send you a free copy. Thomas Jefferson said that a private central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of people than a standing army. We must not let our rulers load us with perpetual debt. Well, that's exactly what has happened. He was prophetic. Uh, we have, because of having this private banking system, where private bankers, for their own purposes, uh, not for the good of the people, are manipulating our currency, we have become the, the most debt uh, the largest debtor nation ever in the history of the world. And we really need to do something about it. Uh, our, our national debt has increased 50% just in the last four years. That's more than all the presidents together. More debt was added in the last four years than all the presidents together from George Washington on, except for George Bush. Okay, And George Bush didn't add nearly as much as has been added under Obama. Um, Alan Greenspan, we think of him as the uh, head of the Federal Reserve System, which he was prior to Bernanke, but he used to be a good guy. He used to be a straight guy. He wrote a book, and in that he said, in the absence of the gold standard, there is no way to protect savings from confiscation through inflation. There is no safe store of value. Of course, later on he crossed over the dark side and, and joined the Fed, but he was telling the truth here. Now, when we say confiscation through inflation, what are we talking about? Who can confiscate our money through inflation? Well, obviously only the government because we cannot create inflation. Only the government can by overprinting money. Inflation, by the way, is not rising prices. Inflation is just what the word says. It's inflation of the money supply. So as we, as we add more and more money to, to the money supply, it becomes worth less and less until eventually it's worth less. Okay. So basically the government is stealing our money through uh, from us, taking our savings, through inflation. Uh, matter of fact, the chairman of the Federal Reserve System, uh, uh, currently Ben Bernanke, made the statement recently that it is in the interest of the federal government to create inflation because it, in effect, lowers the national debt. It makes the debt cost less. All right, the crime of the century. To me, this is when it all started. For the first 157 years of our republic, and we are a republic, regardless of what our current president says, um, we had essentially no inflation. Gold was $20 an ounce in 1776. It was $20 an ounce in 1933. The average skilled laborers paid $20 when our country started. He was paid $20 a week in 1933. But then we got Executive Order 6102. Within two months of becoming president, uh, FDR issued this criminal executive order. It violated the Constitution. He totally bypassed the Congress. He did it by executive order. Sound familiar? Uh, in this confiscation, he took not only gold, but also gold certificates. Our $20 bills used to be gold certificates. I'll show you a picture of it. They were actually redeemable for one ounce of gold. So people in this country had 40% of their wealth in gold uh, because the money was gold. Your grandparents went to the store with a $20 gold coin to buy groceries. So he not only confiscated 40% of the wealth of the country, he ended the gold standard putting us on the road to socialism. And if you didn't turn your money in to the federal government, you could face a 10-year federal prison term, you became a federal felon, or pay a $10,000 fine, which would be the equivalent of about a half million bucks today, or both. No ruler in the history of the world has ever made it illegal for citizens to own their own money, before or since, except FDR. At the top here, you see the $20 gold certificate, and you can see the orange arrow pointing to the seal. It is a gold certificate. 
Uh, it says there have been deposited in the Treasury of the United States of America $20 in gold coin payable to the bearer on demand. At the bottom, you see the $20 Federal Reserve note that was issued starting in 1913 and became the only currency we had in 1933. And you can see the black seal of the evil empire there. Uh, the $20 Federal Reserve uh, or gold certificate was redeemable for one ounce of gold. Uh, do you know what you can redeem your $20 bill for today, what the federal government is required to give you? Absolutely nothing. Well, actually, they have to give you two $10 bills or four fives or 20 singles, but you get the point. Only more worthless paper. Nothing of value. So. Based on this, do you think hyperinflation is coming to a nation near you? Well, 10% of modern nations have experienced hyperinflation. And since our nation has more debt than any nation that's ever existed on the planet, I don't see that we're immune from that. You can see the, uh, the drop in the purchasing power of the US dollar. 1913, when the Federal Reserve was founded, uh, a dollar's worth a dollar. Uh, then it dropped off dramatically. And people found that the Federal Reserve notes actually were being accepted by stores and so on. So the dollar recovered. And the next high point you see there is 1933. From that point on, it's been all downhill. And the dollar's worth four cents on the dollar today compared to what it was in 1913. So you choose. Would you rather have uh, a gold coin that FDR confiscated from your grandparents that's worth today $1,800? Or would you rather, rather have a $20 Fed Reserve note that today is worth 80 cents in 1933 terms? The upshot of all this has been that the average American family of four owes a quarter million dollars towards the national debt. That's not their, their mortgage or their credit card loans or their student loans. That's just their share of the national debt. Pretty scary. So do you think that gold can double in price? Well, the US government has actually guaranteed that it will double in price. This is a chart showing the price of gold in the national debt. Some other things on there as well, but look at the left column and the right column. You can see that every time, historically, the national debt has doubled, gold has doubled in price. So here's the equation. We have overspending just about every year, uh, on average, anywhere between $1 and $1.3 trillion of overspending per year. The biggest deficit, by the way, prior to Obama was the last year of Bush, which was half a trillion, and we were horrified by that. And in the very next year, it was over a trillion. It's been every, every year a trillion since then. So the overspending uh, adds up to deficits. Every year, the deficit is added to the national debt, which causes inflation, which, of course, causes the dollar to decline in real purchasing power. And the more the dollar goes down, the higher gold goes up. Here's the last 100 years. Uh, I'm 64. The older I get, uh, the more I look at the long term rather than what an investment's done over the last year or two. And so I did about two months' worth of research to find these stats. Real estate, according to the Case-Shiller Index, has been down 51 of the last 100 uh, years. Treasury yields have been down 47. The stock market has been down 33. Even bullion gold, which is the next best investment, has been down 10 of the last 100 years because occasionally we get things right. The dollar goes up. Gold will go down. For instance, when Ronald Reagan took the top tax rate from 70% down to um, 28%, dollar went up, gold went down. But investment grade gold has not had one down year either here or in Europe in the last 100 years. Here's a comparison of what would have happened with $10,000 if you invest in the stock market 40 years ago. It grew to $105,000 in the Dow. Sounds good, 10 times your money, but when you factor in inflation, you actually lost money. If you put it in gold bullion, you just about broke even. If you put it in investment grade gold, according to an index called the PCGS 3000, it grew to two and a half times as much as gold bullion. But I told you seven times as much a minute ago, right? Well, this is ordinary rare coins. If you put these, if you put the same $10,000 into very high grade, um, high condition, uh, very high rarity uh, coins, it would have grown to two and a half million dollars, or seven times as much as bullion, twenty times as much as the stock market. Now, I need you to understand what flagship coins are to understand why investment grade coins are so valuable to you. Uh, flagship coins are only four countries that ever issued them. Uh, they are. Um, good old United States, which is our $20 uh, double equals is called. In England issued them. Uh, they were called uh, guineas and pounds. At one point, they're called sovereigns, all the same coin. 
That's a five guinea there. There's the Spanish eight escudos, a beautiful coin. And then finally, the French 100 francs. Now, all of these have one thing in common. They're at least one ounce in gold. They're old. And they're rare. That's why a Krugerrand will never be a flagship coin or an American Eagle they'll, because they'll never be rare. Uh, they made 4.6 trillion, or the, I'm sorry, 4.6 million Krugerrands last year. It'll never be a rare coin. Now, the interesting thing is that 26 years ago, these four coins I just showed you, if they were in the same condition and the same rarity, sold for the same price. But today, the U.S. coin sells for 10 to 20 times as much as its European cousins. Why? Well, it's real simple. It's because of these two companies. On the left, you see NGC, which is the Numismatic Guarantee Corporation. And on the right, you see PCGS, which is a professional coin grading service. PCGS was started in 86, NGC in 87. And what they both do is they guarantee the authenticity of rare coins. They guarantee the grade. And if they're wrong, they will buy it back at full price. So their guarantee actually means something, unlike a lot of people's guarantees these days. So they get they certify the grade. That makes it possible for a guy in Nome, Alaska to buy a coin from a guy in Key West, Florida, sight unseen, with complete confidence. I bought coins anywhere from $2,000 to $220,000 in the last few months, uh, coins that I just wired the money for and had them sent in to me because they were graded by one of these two companies. 26 years ago, the divergence was this. Both U.S. and Europe used a very simple four-point grading system, fine, very fine, extremely fine, and uncirculated. Today, the U.S. uses a very sophisticated 70-point system, but Europe is still using the old antiquated four-point system. There was an article in the journal um, about six or eight months ago about two U.S. coins, same year, same mint, same everything, except one was graded 63 on a scale of 70, and the other was graded 65. The, the lower-grade coin sold for $5,000. And the higher grade coin sold for 22000 So what would cause the coin to be worth almost five times as much? It was partly, of course, because it was higher grade, two grades higher, but that's just too much difference in price. The other part of it is the rarity. The, the MS-63 coin, MS means mint state or uncirculated, there were dozens or hundreds of them known to exist. So it was rare, but not that rare, whereas the, uh, the other coin, the MS-65 coin, there was only 65, or, or, or there was only a dozen that existed in MS-65 condition. So that's why it was worth so much more. So those are the two things that you need to look for, rarity and condition. Now, that was the past. Today, both NGC and PCGS, the two largest grading services, they grade about 95% of all the coins in the world. They have opened offices in Europe, and they did the smart thing. They started using the four-point system. So we started here in the U.S. grading coins at a four-point system, then we went to an eight-point, and then we were drag kicking and screaming into the 20-point system, and finally we went to the 70-point shelter scale. Europe recognized our mistake, and they started using the 70-point scale. So the experts are telling us that the kind of returns we saw in the last 26 years, we will see probably in the next five or six years with European coins because of doing things right. Remember, rare coins have two kinds of value, the intrinsic or bullion value and the extrinsic value or the rarity. So this means that even when gold is down, when bullion is down, the rarities still go up. They don't go up as much in a down year for gold, but they still go up because rare things just continue to get more rare every year. So your investors, you understand the principle of parity. Uh, investments always revert to the mean. 26 years ago, all these coins were selling for the same price, but now we have this huge disparity. What would it take for these coins to be at parity again? Well, there's two possibilities. One would be that the U.S. Could, coins could drop in value to equal the price of the European cousins. How likely is that? I mean, what it would take would be a complete clean sweep of Congress, have people there in Washington that, that understand the Constitution, or frankly, at this point, I'd be happy to just see a few people up there that seem to have read the Constitution. Uh, and a dramatic reduction in the national debt to cause any kind of a dent in the price of gold. And even that might not drop the price of the rare coins, but it's possible. The other possibility, and the much more likely one, is that the European coins are going to rise in value to meet the prices of U.S. coins. What would it take for that to happen? Well, for them to have the same kind of grading systems in Europe has caused a huge increase in prices here in the U.S. U.S. coins over the last 20 years have gone up um, thousands of percent European coins, although they've gone up steadily every year, they've only gone up hundreds of percent.
But now that grading has taken hold in Europe, uh, the experts are telling us that within five years, we should see critical mass where the majority of the coins of Europe will be graded on the US systems. Uh, we're going to see some dramatic increases in prices. So you can have it all. You can own a piece of history. I, you know, I love studying history uh, in art uh, and it goes to investing. And the, the reason I enjoy this so much after I retired from the brokerage business, I really got into this because all three of the things that I enjoy, history and, and art and, and investing, are all embodying this. But most important, you can sleep well at night knowing that you've, you've invested in the most secure asset for these times, which is gold. Here's a picture of one of my personal coins. Uh, this is a handmade coin. It's a British noble that's over 700 years old. Uh, just amazing detail. I just want to give you a feel for what some of these rare coins are like. So where's the best place for your gold? Well, it's in your own safe, in your possession. This is not how to own gold. You don't want to own ETFs. You don't want to own precious metals futures. You don't want mining stocks or, or any kind of gold certificates, any paper ownership of gold. Because if we see the crash that a lot of people are predicting, if we see hyperinflation in this country, uh, then your paper may never be redeemed for gold. You may never see, no matter how big the institution is, Perth, man, I don't care, uh, you may never see the actual gold because it may be impossible to transact business internationally. So what should you do with this information? Well, for the last 35 years, like most financial professionals, I've always advised my clients to have 10% in gold of their, of their total net worth. Today, the danger is a lot greater. and I see a lot of financial fun professionals advising as much as 50%. Uh, I don't really tell people how much they should put in gold, but I tell them you should have gold. I don't think anybody should put more than 50% of their money in any asset class, but I do believe you should have at least 10% of your net worth because your savings could literally become worthless. Now, every week we do classes. Um, we do have the financial education series, which is held on Monday nights. Uh, uh, that's 8 o'clock Eastern time. And we cover all aspects of trading and investing, just about everything you can imagine, every great speaker you've ever heard sometime or another, they're on the financial education webinars. Uh, these are sponsored uh, by and paid for Golden Art Treasuries. On Tuesday nights at 6 o'clock uh, Eastern Time, we focus in on gold and silver. The reason we do that is, is our uh, chief numismatist for our company, our buyer for our coins, is based in Europe. So 6 o'clock at night here is midnight there. That's late enough to ask the board guy to stay up. If you're interested in being on these webinars, write to webinars at bellsouth.net and we'll be glad to add you to the list. Uh, tell us whether you want to be on the Monday night or the Tuesday night or both. Um, here's some common sense from the, the greatest source of wisdom in the world, the Bible. Proverbs 21.20 says, be sensible and store up precious treasures. Don't waste them like a fool. Don't have all your money in paper assets. Uh, here's our contact information. Uh, Golden Art LLC is located in Palm Beach, Florida. Uh, the email address uh, to reach me directly is my private email. is rarecoins at att.net, rarecoins at att.net. Our telephone number, 561-753-5998. And our website is goldenarttreasures.com, goldenarttreasures.com. We also have a partnership with christianfinancialconcepts.com. And I didn't put that on the slides here, but there you can find literally hundreds of hours of uh, great education from some of the greatest speakers in the world. I'm not talking about myself. I try to get great speakers every Monday night, and if I can't get anybody great, then I'll speak myself. But there are some fantastic speakers on just about every aspect of finance, from personal financial planning to living a debt-free lifestyle, how to teach your children about money, um, futures, uh, stock options, uh, real estate, insurance. You name it, anything to do with finance, you'll see it there. Uh, finally, I would love to give every one of you one of these Zimbabwe notes. Just send your mailing address with zip code and your phone number to webinars at bellsouth.net. And if anything I've said here has struck a chord with you today, uh, just request uh, something called the Gold Education Starter Package, and we'll be more than happy to send you uh, some, some great articles and some videos. Um, any way we can help you, uh, we're, we're glad to do that. Um, I'm out of time. There's a quick question here. 
are rare coins immune from government possession uh, like what FDR did? No. Um, the best way to protect your gold is to do, not let them know that you've got it. Uh, one of the things that we value is privacy, and we make sure that our clients are able to buy their coins privately because the fact that FDR exempted rare coins doesn't mean that the next criminal uh, won't take them all. Uh, it wasn't a law that exempted the rare coins. It was just uh, his decision. But he took 99% of the coins, which were the bullion coins. Well, thank you all for, for your time today. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, being here with you. And if you have any questions, uh, please write to me at rarecoins at att.net.